As most of you know, by the end of Burial at Sea Episode 2, we find out that both Jeremiah Fink and Yi Su Chong ended up sharing research via a tear. On Fink's end, he received a blueprint for a type of Big Daddy. After multiple experiments were conducted to perfect the Songbird, or in this case, Elizabeth's protector, a final version was finalized. Just like Songbird's counterparts in Rapture, Songbird was a terrifying combination between a human and a machine. To this day, however, we still don't know who Fink drafted to be the unlucky participant in becoming Songbird. As mentioned earlier, a multitude of experiments were conducted, mainly on animals such as gorillas and dogs, which you can see within the tower on Monument Island and Fink's personal research laboratory. Like a little sister to a big daddy, Fink was desperately trying to figure out the formula to create a pair bond between Elizabeth and Songbird. Initial tests failed one after another. Eventually, by what seemed like an absolute miracle, a freak accident occurred where Songbird crashed through Elizabeth's tower after breaking out of Fink's research lab, resulting in his breathing apparatus coming off. At this time, Elizabeth was only a little girl, so she wanted to do whatever she could to save him. She ended up putting his breathing device back together, thus causing a successful pair bond between the two. This definitely wasn't the way Fink envisioned the pair bond would happen, but I'm sure he was thrilled that his work finally paid off. Also remember earlier how I mentioned that Fink and Su Chong worked together through a tear? Well, Fink came to him with his research and his successful pair bond experiment. However, with Su Chong being as egotistical as he is, he believed that it was his theory that was correct. He believed that a hair sample, which happened to be Elizabeth's, was the true cause of the pair bond. Su Chong attempted to prove his theory over and over on different Big Daddy models, with absolute failure every time. With Bioshock Infinite's idea of constants and variables, we can consider Songbird the Big Daddy of Columbia, although you could potentially make the argument that the Handyman could be as well. With the work shared between Fink and Su Chong, Songbird was essentially modeled almost entirely of components that made up a Big Daddy. For example, Songbird's eyes would change colors to indicate the mood he was currently in, whether it was calmness or violence. Also, just like a Big Daddy, Songbird had incredible strength, speed, and his enormous size to absolutely decimate anyone who dared to harm him or Elizabeth. And to make Songbird even more terrifying, he was equipped with metal talings to his feet and knuckles, which looked like claws, and could also rip through buildings like they were made of paper. During the idea of coming up with a protector or even a caretaker for Elizabeth, Comstock had her essentially imprisoned within a tower on Monument Island when she was only a baby. While growing up in the tower, she had no contact with the outside world of Columbia, besides Songbird and occasionally Comstock and other scientists to observe her, which is extremely creepy. So, Elizabeth became close to Songbird and he was technically her only friend for a long time. He brought gifts like toys, books, and food, furthering the friendship. This of course all changed as she entered her teen and young adult years. While she was a child, Songbird was her only friend. When she started to grow up, she slowly started to hate and despise Songbird due to her viewing him as a guard or essentially a warden rather than a friend. Now, since getting the job to bring us the girl and wipe away the debt, Booker DeWitt is tasked with going to Columbia and rescuing Elizabeth. He makes his way to her tower and eventually decides to break her out. Unfortunately, however, he didn't know about Songbird until the very last second. As Elizabeth and Booker are running towards the elevator and running away from Songbird, Songbird can be seen ripping the tower apart with those metal claws that I mentioned earlier. Eventually, they both make it inside of the elevator and just as it opens, Songbird does his best Jack Nicholson impression by saying, Here's Songbird, before getting pushed down by the pressure of the elevator. As Booker and Elizabeth reach the top of the tower, Songbird ends up knocking them both off. Luckily, however, Booker is able to catch Elizabeth in midair and use the skyhook to save them from almost certain death. As they're trying to get away from Songbird on the skyline, he's ending up chasing him down and trying to retrieve Elizabeth. 
In terms of specific events, however, that Songbird has a role in during Bioshock Infinite, there's only a few, which in my opinion is a huge missed opportunity. First off, as Booker and Elizabeth are on the First Lady airship, Songbird attacks and destroys it after the statue plays that all familiar tune that you heard at the beginning of the video. Next, as Booker is looking for the code to unlock an elevator during the Comstock House level, that tune plays again. This time, however, Booker and Elizabeth are able to hide as Songbird is essentially investigating just outside of the building that they happen to be in. During the final part of the game, on the Hand of the Prophet, due to a note given to Booker by another version of Elizabeth from a different reality, the Elizabeth that we know cracks the code. The tune that's being played is actually four musical notes, which ironically spell out Cage. In playing the correct notes, Elizabeth convinces Songbird to help her and Booker take down the invading Vox Populi, and finally destroying the siphon which is in her tower afterwards. After Elizabeth is able to gain full control over her powers, she teleports herself and Booker into Rapture via a tear. Unfortunately, in doing so, Songbird is trapped outside of Rapture in the depths of the ocean. It's here where we witness the demise of Songbird. Honestly, to me, this was a bit heartbreaking to hear his cries of pain and then finally seeing his acceptance of what's about to happen. Now to round out this story, we'll have to circle all the way back to the beginning with the collaboration between Fink and Su Chong. During Burial at Sea Episode 2, Elizabeth ends up finding all of the mentioned test subjects, which are all dogs, which seem to be preserved in a liquid, most likely a form of formaldehyde if I had to guess. While searching Fink's laboratory, she discovers everything that I mentioned up until this point in the video. The Parabond experiment, how Songbird was conceived, the prototype of Songbird, and all of the various methods of experimentations that failed. Through an old reel of film, she witnesses how she put the breather back on a Songbird, which caused the Parabond between the two. And she uses this exact quote, the lion with a thorn in its paw. So ladies and gentlemen, I really do hope you enjoyed the story of Songbird. If you did, a like rating would greatly be appreciated, if not, it's completely okay. If you happen to be new here, or aren't subscribed yet, would you mind subscribing if you did enjoy the video? It helps me out, and it also helps the channel grow. If not, again, it's completely okay. Other than that, if you'd like to be notified when a future video or live stream goes live, be sure to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button, and turn on all post notifications. This way, hopefully, you shouldn't miss any future content. If you'd like to talk to me outside of YouTube, my social medias are the best ways to do so. My Twitter and Instagram will be provided down in the description below, and I do answer all messages on there. Also, if you'd like to see any additional content, feel free to check out my second channel, which will also be provided in the description below. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.